Maurice, what on earth are you doing here? My mother, is she ill? No, she's well. Tomorrow she's coming to early communion. She felt the need to clear her cell. No, Maurice, you mustn't go in. Who's going to stop me? What is it? Money? Is it any of your business? Yes, Maurice, it is. You know it is. Surely, with the worry you've caused her already, you carry enough on your conscience. Do you want her death as well? I'll go the way I came. Father Damien to phone the doctor. Is something wrong? Help me to get her to the sacristy. <laughs> coming now. How did it happen? Well, it was during the service. Did see it happen? My wife, sir. I was watching her. She was following the service and she, she closed her eyes. I thought she was just praying, but then she started to fall sideways and I knew she was ill. Well, she's dead now. A heart attack. Well, one could say that even the Contest de saint Fiac had a ticker and it had to stop one day. <laughs> but I warned her. Last year I told her, stop thinking you're 40, you're 67. Take it easy and you live to your 90. She didn't take your advice? Why should she? What's the good of life without living it? <laughs> Has anybody telephoned the chateau? Yes, I did. Uh, Gautier's on his way down. Uh, Jean-Pierre, a garden wait for him. Tell him where we are. 
You can sign the certificate, all right, then? Why not? Who are you, monsieur? Uh, this gentleman is from Paris, uh, Monsieur Maigret. You mean uh, Inspector Maigret, don't you? <laughs> Have you got a blanket or a sheet to cover? Oh, yes, of course. You here for any special reason? No, no, I'm here for personal reasons. Oh. Mm. Well, if you've got any secrets, don't tell them in front of Baptiste here. Oh, stop press, Baptiste, they call him. Deaf as a post, aren't you? Unless he chooses. Uh, there's a gravestone out there. Everest Megre. Oh, yes, my father. He was agent to the old count. My husband was brought up here. I used to sing in the choir until my voice broke. I'd never seen San Fiacre. You were on a sort of sentimental journey. He's here. I'll miss you, Gautier, in the station wagon. Oh, thank you. Uh, Jean-Pierre, have you had any breakfast? No, Father. Well, set out the chant books for second mass, and then you can slip off home. Yes, Father. Now, off you go now. Well, we must get her up to the chateau. That's the first thing to do. Good morning, Father. Good morning. This is a terrible thing. Yes. An overdose of life. What's so terrible about that? Ah, oh, Baptiste, give me a hand with this. Oh, uh, this is Monsieur Gautier, agent for the estate. Inspector Magro from Paris. Police, there's, there's no reason to suppose that. But there, there couldn't be. No, of course there couldn't be. He's only here on holiday. Hey, Inspector. Now then, come along, Gautier. Get over to the other end of this. I was eight when I first saw her. I thought she was wonderful. I'd have died for her. In fact, I was in love with her. It was a special grace. To die when she did, you mean? After communion? Else? Yes, sometimes I think I don't like you very much. Go on, get on with it. Are you going up to the chateau? Yes. Would you like me to lead you there? No, I know the way. We'll follow it. Right. See you later. I was just thinking. I feel sad about her. Well, you were talking about her the other day, remember? The young countess, we used to call her. I remember seeing her driving through the park in a white summer dress. The sun always seemed to shine in those days. It would shine for all of us when we were young. <laughs> yeah. Come on.
it is. It's lovely. Yeah. Part of a way of life that's almost past. Is that a bad thing? Hmm? No, no, it's just getting sentimental. Good morning, Albert. They're all upstairs, monsieur. Poor dear lady. Poor dear lady. He doesn't remember me. And I used to be jealous because he polished her ladyship's boots. Monsieur, madame. Marie. You don't yes, remember monsieur. me? I'm afraid I don't, monsieur. But then I hardly remember myself this morning. Forgive me, monsieur. You are... Jules Maigret. Monsieur Jules. After all these years. My wife. Madame. Madame. How good to see you. And you so famous now, too. But oh, monsieur. What a dreadful time for you to have come back. Yes, Marie. Forgive me. And perhaps you will excuse me. I have everything to do. We can get no help these days. Two in the house, and there used to be 14. Now, could I help you? Oh, madame, if you would. It's been a nightmare. Dr. B. Dr. B. I must know what's happened. I'm entitled to know. Why didn't anybody wake me? Oh, go back to bed. You want a drink? Who are you? Are you the undertaker? Uh, no, Monsieur Le Comte. Oh, ho, 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 Monsieur Le Comte. What do you think he is? Jean Metier, her ladyship's secretary, and what else? Well, I know the old Count is dead. Uh, there was a son. Oh, Count Maurice? Mm. Yes, sir. Uh, will you ask him that uh, Inspector Maigret would like to talk to him? Inspector Maigret? Oh, Count Maurice never comes near to hear the Monte Carlo or can. Oh, can I? Uh, we have a word. Yes, of course. This way. Oh, what would you like? There's only some bottles up. Now, why didn't uh, Metier, the secretary, come down with a station wagon? Well, him get up for early mass or bless my boots, no. Cognac? No, thanks. I haven't had breakfast. Oh, well, I find Cognac got a very good breakfast. Now, tell me, my friend, why I shouldn't sign that death certificate. No reason at all. I'm sure you're right. She died of a heart attack. Oh, I'm relieved. Yes, and it wasn't a first. She had one a little time ago, a slight one. That was when I warned her. What caused it? Money. The Count never came here unless he wanted money. Then they quarrelled. Then she was ill. Mm. Did you ever give her drugs? Oh, she wouldn't take them. Sleeping pills? She didn't need them. Mm. Didn't you hear the gossip? Gossip? What about? Oh, no, of course you wouldn't. It's about Jean Metier. Oh, the young man who oversleeps. Yes, until the summer, Emile Gautier used to do her accounts. Mm -hmm. And then along comes Jean Metier. Out goes Emile. Emile was the agent's son. Yes, Emile went out because the Countess is the sort of woman who can't live in a house without a man about the place. And the Count wouldn't live here. Why? Why? Well, for the same reason he never married. You can't have two women in the same house. Mm -hmm. You ever known a house large enough for two women? Tell me, was the Countess a regular churchgoer? Oh, if you mean, was it predictable that the Countess would attend first mass today, you better ask Father Damion. Well, as a reasonable man, would you expect it? 
Well, as a reasonable man, I haven't been to church since I studied anatomy. Uh, the Chateau de saint fiac <clears throat> Yes, it is. I'm having my breakfast. Yeah. Oh, is he? Well, you better go and see him. All right, then. Telephone him if you'd rather. That was Gautier. He had to go into a town to arrange for the funeral. It seems that Count Maurice is not in Monte Carlo. He's here at the Hotel de France. He arrived last night. Is he? Does he know about his mother? No, oh, but he will soon. Gautier is telephoning him. And it seems the Count is not alone. What time is it? It's nearly 11. No, no, Maurice. There's a message. What is it? It's your mother. Well? She's dead. Dead? But how? I don't know. At last, I can take you to my home. Sure you won't change your mind? No, thanks. Oh, for heaven's sake, Gautier, sit down. Oh, here they are. Huh? Oh, that's a bit of a print for our belt. Thank you, darling. You know, it's a funny thing. While she was alive, nothing would have made me change my way of life. Now that she's dead... Where is old Gautier? Who's he? Huh? He's our agent. Well, Gautier. Hello, Monsieur Maurice. Good to see you again. It's a long time since you were here. Yes, you still look much the same. Well, how are things? Still going from bad to worse, eh? How could things be worse with your mother dead? You don't get my point, do you, Gautier? So that's the young Count. Yes, he's quite a boy, is Maurice. Mm. Well, come on, let's go in. Sonia! Come on. Hello, Albert. Nice to see you again. Thank you, Monsieur. You're looking fine, you old rascal. Hello, Marie. Monsieur Marie. Mademoiselle Vassilier. Would you like to go up? Not for a moment. Where's Dr. B? Uh, he's at the library. Oh, come on, go to here. Let me have your coat, Mademoiselle. Thank you. Ah, Dr. B. me jump. I'm sorry. I'm Sonia Vasiliev. Maigre. Oh, I've heard a lot about you. You caught me out. What did I catch you at? Counting the silver. Actually, it wasn't like that. I haven't been here before. Maurice was very fond of her, you know. Mm. But she didn't want to meet you. I didn't want to meet her. Oh, I see. No, I don't think you do. I didn't want to meet her unless I was going to marry Maurice. He wants to marry you? Yes and no. Same with me. Is it a question of money? No. Temperaments. But temperaments can be expensive. Inspector, the Count would like to speak to you now. Ah, Inspector. 
My apologies. I took you for a person from the local gendarmerie. Dr. Bouchardon has just explained to me. Monsieur Le Comte. I'm glad you're here, and for reasons that Gautier will explain to you later, I'd be glad if you'll remain. Uh, Emile, come in here a moment, will you? Yes, sir. Uh, Monsieur Maurice, I believe you know my son works at the bank. He'll be able to tell you the exact present state of the account. Oh, it's quite simple, monsieur. We're carrying a large unsecured overdraft. Unsecured? What about all the other properties? The farms? Well, all the farms were sold or mortgaged, and the Paris property was sold last year, as you know. But I took only a few thousand. What about the rest? Well, it was reinvested against our advice. It's lost? I'm afraid so. What about my mother's personal belongings? They must be worth something. Well, the will must first be proved. I see. Well, I shall go and pay my respects to my dear mother. It appears that I can't even afford a dark suit for a funeral. Oh, Monsieur Le Comte. Yes? May I ask you a question? Yes, certainly, Inspector. Uh, what brought you back to Saint Fiacre last night? Is this curiosity? Yes. It was money. I wanted to borrow 40,000 francs. Because unless I pay a check for that amount into my bank by the time it opens tomorrow morning, I shall probably go to prison. Maurice! Where is the count going to find that kind of money? I don't know. Oh, bless my boots, I must be going. I've got some work to do. Inspector? Doctor? Come in here a minute. Oh, will you need me, Papa? Uh, no, no, I will. No, thank you. I feel as if I've done something wrong. Well, how do you mean? Well, whenever I was sent for to this room, it meant I was in trouble. Huh? <laughs> it was darker then, and it used to smell of my father's tobacco. Oh, isn't that the old Count's 12 bore? Uh, yes, yes, it's mine now. I, I bought them all at various times. Oh, did you do a lot of shooting? Oh, no, no, very little. Quite simply, it was to help her. Hmm. It's a beautiful gun. Uh, well, Monsieur Gautier, uh, what was it that the Count said you wanted to tell me? It's about the will. Uh, do sit down, won't you, Inspector? I imagine the chateau goes to the Count. Uh, in itself, it's a liability. What I very much fear is there will be a large bequest to the Secretary. Mm, why to him? The Count has seemed quite unable to refuse him anything. Before he came here, Matteo used to edit a small art magazine. Mm. Uh, he said there was some printing process he'd invented which only needed a little more capital. The Count has indulged him. He set up a company. There was an office in Paris. And he, he used to play about at the printing works in the town. How much was lost? I'm not sure that it was lost. Oh, you think it went into somebody's pocket? I warned Matteo I should have to speak to the Countess. Recently? A few weeks ago. And uh, did you? I kept putting it off. I'd give ten years of my life to avoid a scandal. You'll understand that, Inspector. But I couldn't be at peace if I thought that Matteo had got away with... What? I don't know. I was going to say is something diabolically clever. Show me where she was kneeling when you first noticed her. She was like this, with her hands folded. Mm -hmm. uh, there were some women there, a priest and the old little boy. No one in the back of the church. Ah, oh, hello, Monsieur Gaudet. Father. What can I do for you? I thought we'd better have a word about the funeral. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, is Monsieur Maigret here? Well, not to my knowledge, no. I thought that was his car outside. Oh, well, perhaps they're in the church. She had her hands on a book when she started to fall. A book of devotion? Yes, a prayer book. Can I help you? Yes, there was a book here, a prayer book. Is it missing? Or perhaps it was collected after the service. Oh, I don't think so. Why not, Mr. Gautier? Huh? Well, I really don't know. Well, no one else sits here. Hmm. Hmm. Then it uh, should have been left here and has disappeared between the time we took her away and now. Yes, I suppose so. That why on earth. Jean-Pierre has something to say to you. This is what we were looking for. I found it, but I didn't take it. He was carrying it home. How do you mean you found it, but you didn't take it? It was wrapped in my surplus, I'll show you. My surplus was here, and it was wrapped up in it. 
I thought I was meant to take it. Aren't you taught to hang up your circus? Yes. And you got a prayer book of your own? Not one like that. Jean-Pierre, if, when you think about it, you remember that you didn't actually find it wrapped in your surplus, come and tell me, will you? It might be worth ten francs towards a new one. I'll think about it. But I don't think I remember. Can I go now, Father? Yes, yes. Off you go. I'll talk to that young man tomorrow. Father, may I just see that? Oh. Dramatic suicide in high places. Monte Carlo, May 30th, declaring that he was outraged by a scandal affecting a member of the family. The well-known sportsman Maurice de Saint-Fiacre shot himself last night. What? The most painful aspect of this tragedy is that the scandal concerns his mother, the Dowager Countess. If it were true, it would be shocking to publish it, but untrue. Yes. Either way, with her heart in the state it was in, the shock would be bound to kill her. Excuse me. What is it? I'm busy. Can we talk? It's important. It's important we get this issue to bed. What is it you want? Do you recognize this, the printing? What about it? Is it your typeface? Yes, we use it for small jobs. And set. The paper? Yes. That's the kind of rubbish we get nowadays. Next week, it's going up by 3%. So this could have come from here. What, that? We take a pride in our job here. Have you seen uh, Jean Mété lately? Who? The young man from the Chateau. Oh, him. No, I haven't seen him for a month or two. Comes and goes as he pleases. Anything else? Not at the moment. Thank you. Good. Then I can get on with my work. You'll get the paper, Dave. Oh, thank you. Just in time. I've, I've just finished. Madame, may I have a word with you? Yes, if you wish. Do you smoke? No, thank you. I, um, I need your advice on a personal matter. The question is, what shall I wear for the funeral? This or a black suit? Black as usual. I can't mean to wear a grey suit. Well, perhaps he hadn't packed for a sudden death. Pretends he hasn't got the money. It's to attract sympathy. If I wear grey, people will say, doesn't he care? Well, then you must wear the black. If I go. Why shouldn't you go? Well, you know, the inspector hasn't asked to see me. And I spent all day yesterday at the chateau waiting. Do you think that's a bad sign? Well, if you want to find out, here he is now. Oh, no. Well, you must excuse me, madame. He's seen you. This is terrible. He'll think I've been pumping you. So you are, but she won't kill you for that. Mr. Mitty, just the man I wanted to see. Mr. Mitty has been complaining that you haven't interviewed him yet. So I'll leave the two of you together. You wanted to see me? No. Well, that is. Uh, sit down.
Right. I'm interviewing you. Speak. Well, I wasn't making any complaint. You better tell me. Well, everybody thinks I was having a scandalous affair with the Countess. It's true I liked her very much. I don't get on very well with young women. We shared secrets together and laughed a lot. Monsieur, the women of our country never really grow old. Not in their hearts. Did she share the secret of your printing activities? Baptiste told me. Monsieur, do you believe me when I tell you that I had nothing to do with it? What about the investments? Did you know about those? Of course. Don't you understand? Something had to be done. The estate was being eaten up to pay for the Count's follies. made out to me. Not to you? Well, the name here should be Baptiste Vesson. Vesson? The organist? Why him? He knew your father. He didn't want to see you arrested. Where would he get 40,000 francs? He's a thrifty man and a good man. And you brought spiritual pressure to bear, I have no doubt. For your mother's sake, I wanted you to have time. What for? Are you still hoping I'll lead the good life? I shall pray for you. I resent your interference with my soul. My life is my own affair. I'll change it when it pleases me, which is likely to be never. Will everything have to come out? Yes, I'm afraid so. Father, I don't like it any more than you do. She was my countess too, you know. Marie Louise Nicola Ribe by courtesy 10th Contest to Saint Fiac. As a good Republican, I say, Madame Ribe, may your bones rest in peace. Mm. The last of the 48. It was a good year for us. You're not drinking, Father. Dr. B, don't you think you've had enough? Oh, you can give me a lift home, Father. Oh, here's someone who needs forgiveness. Or a strong drink. Come, come, come. You can cry after a wedding. But after a funeral, it's considered impolite not to celebrate the beautiful fact of being alive. Excuse me, Monsieur Gautier. There's a young man wishes to speak to you. Oh, well, I can't see him now. He's in the hall. Huh? Oh, very well. Where's the car? In the office with your son. What's that? A receipt for the will. Where do I sign? Uh. Well, we might as well get on with it. Remember that. Wait here till you're sent for. Yes, sir. We all here, gentlemen? Not for me, thank you, Albert. Perhaps Monsieur Emile will have something. <coughs> what about you, Mate? Another damier? You've got what you want? Yes, thank you. Yes, yeah. How about a drink for you? Dr. B, help yourself, as I'm sure you've done many times before. You won't be needing you now, Albert. Well, gentlemen, we're all gathered here, the beneficiaries of my mother's will. All except, that is, Inspector Maigret. And we know why he's here. Because one of us murdered my mother. Maurice! Well, deprived her of the will to live. Isn't that the same thing, Inspector? That's for the public prosecutor to decide. But surely motive is all important. Always. Might be hatred or revenge, but sometimes motive can be very curious. It might be a twisted sense of duty, even pity. 
We're very lucky to have you here, Inspector. We might have had some fool from the local gendarmerie. Dr. B, are you quite sure that it was heart failure due to shock? Yes, quite sure. You know, if you drink a little less, you might be able to afford a new car. <laughs> I'd rather drink. My mother's left you a choice of her cars. Oh, her ship. Oh, that's very kind of it. Uh, there is, however, one under repair, if you pay the bill. Oh. <laughs> Theodore Gautier, my father's guns, which he seems to have acquired already. Uh, and a silver punch bowl. Father Damier, being curé of saint fiac the income in trust from the Moulin Farm, which she sold two years ago. And any 50 books from the library, you'd better grab them quickly in case the bank claim them. Isn't that right, Emil? There'll have to be a valuation. For you, there's a gold watch. But I don't think you'd kill her for that. Then there's a codicil. To my dear friend, Jean Matei. It's not true. What isn't true? Well, that I knew what that, that she meant. That you were to get 100,000 francs? I told her not to, that I didn't need it. I told her she'd live another 20 years. Hadn't you had enough already? Were you so greedy, so impatient? It's a lie! You had to kill her with Count 10 Maurice. pretty lines of poison. Be careful, Count Maurice. It was you she was afraid of. Always wanting money, forcing her to sell. Count Maurice, you won't get at the truth this way. It's true that Monsieur Metier had a very strong motive. Didn't he have the run of the Prince's works? No, but it opened onto a public yard. It was often left unattended. Does he deny he's an expert printer? Exactly, an expert. But this press cutting was very badly done by an amateur. Inspector. Yes? Before you go any further, <clears throat> the boy Jean-Pierre is here to see you. It concerns the prebble. Where is he? Outside in the hall. Fetch him in. Yeah. Jean-Pierre. Well, Jean-Pierre, what have you got to tell me? Uh, you promised me ten francs if I remembered. Ah, you remembered that you didn't actually find the prayer book. Hmm? Yes, sir. Do you deserve ten francs for confessing to a lie? I didn't steal it. Somebody asked me for it. Who asked you? What must I say? I don't think you know what the truth is, Jean-Pierre. Where do I get the ten francs? When you finished remembering, who asked you? He did. Count Maurice? No, no, him. Well, I don't know his name. I've never spoken to him in my life. Why didn't you say this before? He said no one was to know. He promised me 50 francs. It seems you'd say anything for money, Jean-Pierre. I've seen him at the chateau. Well, I thought it would be all right. When did I speak to you? Uh, just before second mass, in the road. A lie. Is it? I didn't leave the chateau all day. No doubt you can prove that. Here's your ten francs. Boy! Let him go. Godier, call the boy back. No, Godier, let him tell him all lies. They didn't sound like lies to me. No, of course not, but he didn't take in Father Damien this morning. The boy said that he'd found the prayer book, but we thought that he'd stolen it. And that's exactly what he did do. Because he was bribed? No, he stole the prayer book simply because he saw it lying there. But that prayer book was meant to fall into the hands of the police. The press cutting had a dual function. It was intended to kill the Countess and to incriminate Metier. And then nothing happens. Meret is here, but he doesn't arrest anyone. So the boy is bribed to point a finger at Metier. How much did you pay him, Count Maurice? You read out what we get. What about you? Don't you inherit the estate? The estate is worthless. Yes, but you didn't know that. You came here to borrow 40,000 francs from your mother. You were furious when I wouldn't let you near her when you telephoned on Saturday. Uh, Monsieur Maurice stayed at the hotel on Saturday night. He didn't come to the chateau. How could he have put the cutting into the prayer book? Father, huh? I'm, I'm not for one moment accusing Count Maurice, but he did come to the chateau on Saturday night. Huh? You didn't tell me this? I, I was in the office. I was working late on some papers for the Chamber of Commerce, and I, I heard a noise out here. I came out. That window was open, and when I looked into the hall, Count Maurice was going up the stairs. Then Father Damion came out of the Countess's bedroom. <laughs> You've done very well, Emile. It's perfectly true I was here. I wanted to see my mother alone. 
Without the presence of that damned rogue. Father Damio had been preparing her for confession. He said that he had been examining her soul, and he implied that I would do well to examine mine. That wasn't the whole truth. The Damien is in dilemma. He sees me on the one hand as a waster and a murderer, and on the other as a soul that might be saved by a confession, if I was given time. I had meant to help myself to my mother's jewels. Maurice. I had no idea that they belonged to Emil's bank. I admit it wouldn't have made any difference. That wasn't the confession I meant. I'm afraid it'll have to do. I'd probably kill my mother. Not intentionally. By living the life I saw fit. And whose pardon must I ask for that? My mother's? No, it's too late. But I shall never forgive myself until I found the, uh, the villain who murdered her. Personally, I think Jean-Pierre was telling the truth. All right, Inspector, bring in your policeman. Turn the place upside down. You have my permission, Doctor. Is there anything left in that bottle? Father, you're still standing there with a glass of wine. Or does it all belong to the bank? What about you, Matei? Why aren't you drinking? You can't take this with you. Hey, Inspector. Uh, can I have a word with you? Mr. Gautier? In private. Well, Mr. Gautier, what do you want to tell me? Inspector, I, uh, I hope you won't be offended if I offer you my help. You've helped me already. I mean in a different way. I believe you'd rather not make an arrest. Is there some other solution? If the person concerned knew there was no hope, there might be a fatal accident. That might be a solution. It's the only possible solution, surely, if we're to save the family name from being dragged through the courts. Why, well, you want that as little as any of us. Think what a sensation the papers would make out of the relationship between the Countess and Mette, however innocent it might have been. Think what they'd make of the sort of life the Countess led. Such a thing is unthinkable. Go on. Well, there, there can be no doubt in your mind as to who did this thing, surely. What's this help you are going to offer me? The asking of the one fatal question. What question shall I ask? There's one thing I think you've missed. The report said the Count took his own life at the villa of Sonia Vasiliev. Well? The Count only met the young lady a few months ago. She's unknown in this neighborhood. Only Matei had access to private letters. Only he could possibly know about this girl. I found this yesterday. It's from the Count to his mother, asking her to receive Sonia Vasiliev. And you think that if I were to face him with this, he'd have no alternative but to have a fatal accident? What else can he do? Think of his position. Hmm. Your reasoning is very good, up to a point. But I have some further information. I paid a visit this morning to the land registry. It seems that the eight farms which were sold by private treaty for a quarter of their real value were sold to a company called Land Developments. My son advised. They, they always had ready cash. Did your son know that 48 of the shares were owned by Baptiste Vassal, a deaf organist who was able to produce 40,000 new francs to give the count? Did your son know that the other 52 shares were owned by you? He didn't. Is this your first step to get your hands on the chateau itself? Where did I make my mistake? You made two. You didn't rehearse Jean-Pierre enough. He looked at you before he pointed at Metier. And the other? You quoted the press cutting as saying that the Count took his own life at the villa of Sonia Vasiliev. She is mentioned in the cutting, but not in the part that I read out. No one could have known unless they'd seen that cutting before it was put in a prayer book. Do you still think that Métier should have a fatal accident? Repair bills, up goes Albert, all these 
All these bottles are empty, Doctor. Would you mind agitating the bell? All right. Emile. Hmm? Inspector, is anything wrong? Uh, I think you should have a word with your father. came to say goodbye. Oh, you're going? Mm. But uh, I just wanted to say, don't be too hard on Jean-Pierre. We shall see. Oh, if you were Jean-Pierre, wouldn't you do what you were told by the agent of the chateau? The most important man in the district. Perhaps. Mm. 